I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable, and it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off-road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off-road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours, and then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 we're going to do this. And he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability as well as its robust interior are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in, featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is the James Altucher Show. Today on the James Altucher Show. Remember when you listen to this podcast that the theme of the History Hyenas is reality is just a suggestion. So these guys, this is one of my favorite podcasts. They do a podcast about historical topics they find fascinating and also absurd. And they make it as absurd as possible. Also, they do a great morning show. This is how I get my news in the morning. It's called WEPA in the Morning. And they do it on their Patreon account. They're friends of mine. They're comedians. They're hilarious. But remember, don't get offended, which probably means someone's going to get offended. But just... Have a good time and listen and learn. Here's the podcast. So, so what's the biggest bullshit you guys have seen lately? Because you call it out, you see it, you're honest about it. What's like the thing that's gotten you the most angry in the past few weeks in the news? Uh, oh, wow. Um, the, the most angry... You've both Probably, gotten angry. Yeah, I'm angry that Herman Cain just got killed by this Democrat virus. I yeah. mean, listen, we're on to you, Nancy Pelosi. Okay, we know you gave birth to this virus, this air AIDS, and you just killed a great man. Herman Cain, rest in peace. Shout out, Herman Cain. Shout out, Black Conservatives. We've got an episode up on Black Conservatives right now that's not doing well because we ranted against AOC and she controls the internet like you control the media, James. <laughs> James, you had you had Andrew Yang on yesterday. Prepare to go in the opposite direction today. Well, it's hard to tell what direction anybody is anymore, except for people who just... It's like amazing to me on Twitter how 50 million people all agree exactly on the same 40 issues, and then the other 50 million people agree exactly the same on the other 40 issues. Like, it's an amazing coincidence. And then if you if you can speak independently... You're either a fascist or a racist or sure. uh, whatever. So it's frustrating. You can't even talk about medicine without being called a Trump tard. Like that's, I, that's what we talked about on our episode about Th Thomas Sowell uh, in the Black Conservative episode, where it's just like he just gives data and facts, but because it goes against the extreme liberal message, he's just called a fascist and an Uncle Tom, and he gets death threats. But it's like all I'm saying is is that I've done research and this is what I feel. So. The, I think the scariest part about America now is you can't even have a conversation. Like, even if we miss with jokes and just bring up questions, if it's not the right questions, that's it. You're done. Yeah. Like, you can't talk about medicine, right? You, the only thing you're allowed to talk about is, is there's going to be a vaccine. By the way, there's no vaccine for the common cold. And this is kind of like the common cold. It's a coronavirus. So I don't know why everyone's obsessed with the vaccine. So you can't talk about that. You can't talk about, I don't know, what are other, like, Trump signaling conversations. You can't talk about his doctor that he just retweeted the other day, who I think that lady's making a lot of sense. I mean, finally, we got to the 
bottom of demon semen. I mean, that has demon been causing part. a problem in the atmosphere for a long time. These demons have been rolling around, putting things in your asshole, giving you diseases, because while you sleep, these demons sneak around and they start fingering butts. And finally, this lady is telling the truth. I don't know. I kind of got attracted to her once I realized she was talking about d demon sperm. Like, didn't you yeah. guys a little bit? I, yeah, mean, a little I thought bit it was sexy. Sharon Smalls. <laughs> It was definitely one of the sanest things I've heard recently. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, my, my, my daughter's godfather's an ER doctor, and I, I sent him that video. I was like, tell us what's going on, you shill cuck. You're, you're lying to us. He goes, I've put people on hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and whatever the other, I th what was, I forgot. The, the Azithromycin. Azithromycin. He's like, I've put them on, I've put people on those three things since March and April, and I've put, I've given it to 20 people, and all 20 died. Yeah, so but here's like 20. <laughs> she's right that it's 100 percent accurate for fucking killing you. Yeah, but here's the deal: your baby's godfather is a crisis actor. Yes. That I also saw photos of at Newtown. Yeah. So you want you want to tell me about what your affiliations are with? Because I believe you're affiliated with a little party called the Chinese government. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jay Yao knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're just gonna release this as an episode of Conspiracy Cuties, which is our new series. Well, that's just it too. Like if you bring up. If you bring up, oh, you know, George Soros might be bad or Fauci might be a Democrat. Like, there's so many issues where if you bring it up, you're instantly shut down. And right. it, why are all these things political? Like, why should hydroxychloroquine be a political issue? Like, like my wife lived in Africa in the O's, and she took she took it every day to as prophylaxis against took what, the, malaria. Oh, oh, took hydroxychloroquine. hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So now they're yeah. saying, oh no, if you take it, it causes heart attacks. No one got a heart no one has a, had a heart attack from it. Like, uh, but you can't say that, or else people say, Oh, you might as well vote for or here's another one. Where is I don't know if you followed the whole Seattle Chaz thing. First off, oh, if, yeah. you say, if you say Chaz now, you're not allowed to say Chaz, it's Chop. And second, Raz Simone was the warlord of Chaz. That was the quote unquote warlord. And yeah. you know, carrying around guns, he was preventing the police from saving dying teenagers in there in the middle of the night. Yeah. Where is that guy? He's probably going to go to jail. If you're funding a Black Lives Matter utopia, why would you name it the whitest name of all time? Chaz. <laughs> Welcome Chaz. to Chaz. Do you guys want to go get some Ziffendale? And then they're all, it's like armed guards surrounding the place. So while the mayor was calling it a peaceful protest until they threatened to, to go take over her house as well. And then she plowed the place down. So yeah. I think, I mean, don't you, I think that eventually... I mean, especially if Trump gets reelected. I mean, the, the 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 warlord guy and all, the higher ups are good. They're all going to get arrested. They're going to get arrested for treason. Yeah, like you can't even find him now. Like I don't even know. Like he hasn't tweeted. I don't think. And then, but if you go to store.rasimone.com, he's literally selling ski masks with his name on them. Sure. Like, yeah. I'll tell you where they are. They're probably at the front row of any Ted Alexandro comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, yeah, you go to go to you could go to probably his Spreadshirt store. Yeah, and he just has uh, he's got yeah ski masks and AK forty sevens with BLM hashtags on it. How is it there in Florida? Is it any is it is it crazy there? It's like not are people dying in Florida? Or are they just getting cases? Everybody is dead. If I walk outside right now, it's just the streets are filled with bodies. I'm it's just like Gettysburg Battlefield. Yeah, but <laughs> right. you know, for people who live in Florida, that's a little bit of an improvement. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, Florida man says if you put, you know, if you put, if you Google Florida man and your birthday, no matter when you, what day it is, there's always a great story. So that's yeah, <laughs> one of these Google things. But yeah, there's no, a hurricane Flor headed right towards Florida right now. Do you think God is finally intervening in this thing? Maybe I hope so. I hope that uh, I hope it just like kills everybody, including me. I'm getting kind of tired of all this. Not to I'm, be, not to have let's suicidal ideation. Cult. Yeah, let's start a cult and blast off in some Nike sneakers or something. James, you know what you said before, too? I've heard a couple of doctors saying the same thing. Like, there's not going to be a vaccine. Like, don't pin your hopes in the vaccine. I don't understand. Like, like the, the common cold is a coronavirus. There is no... There's been... They've been working for 50 years on a vaccine for the common cold. I don't know why this magically they think there's going to be a vaccine for. Now, look, it would be great if there is, but it, I saw a, a video of Bill Gates the other day with uh, the symptoms. Maybe I even saw it on WEPA. Did I see it on WEPA? I saw it. It's the only place where I watch the news, so I must have seen it somehow related to something <laughs> you said. But uh, I even had to Google Thomas Sowell this morning. I didn't know until until WEPA in the morning. You guys. There educated. you go, dude. We're, so, we, yeah, we, we give you the straight truth and nothing but it. 
I mean, there's, I mean, you know, he's still alive. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's like 90. Yeah, he's 90 years old. Black don't you should, crack. You should have you should have him on uh, Thomas Sowell's Wild, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll throw him out there. Fuck, I'll throw some sauce in his face. Why the hell not? Yeah. So so basically, what do you think is going on in the comedy world right now? Have you done stand-up at all? Comedy is hot right now. I mean, stand-up could not be hotter. Guys, I will be performing in front of a dumpster on East 23rd. <laughs> between 5th and 6th, come on out, social distancing, stand 20 feet apart, and you can only watch a show from the third floor windows. It's what it is. I think the, the big guy, like, the, there is some stuff coming out, like some out, I, it's just going to be outdoor comedy at least until you can't do it anymore. Yeah. The only things I've been hearing is the drive-in shows, which are brutal, but, you know, you sell a lot of car tickets, you can make some money, but that's about it. But it's brutal, brutal, brutal. Yeah, the thing is, I went out, I, w I tried to do a self-produced show uh, here in Bay Ridge the other day, and I put out a bucket, but then this fucking crazy homeless guy started doing his thing, and he bumped me because his act was pretty fucking good. He was talking about how, you know, the Martians are here and coronavirus is... So he just won. And so I got bumped by a crazy guy. That's the... We're competing with crazy people right now to do comedy, and we're losing because those kids, they got skills that have been underappreciated until this pandemic. Yeah, the issue is, is like if you put out a bucket... For your comedy performances, like at Stand Up New York, or they put out a bucket at the end, somebody will shit in it. That's yeah. the issue because pe I mean, there's just yeah, there's or, just people walking around that have no homes. Yeah, or just a homeless guy could claim it. That's his bucket. This has just turned us into the crazy people that we really are. I think it's all about podcasting now. But I got to be honest with you, I'm getting sick of this too. I'm so. Driving. I mean, so what are we supposed to do now? Uber. Let's drive a fucking Uber. Or work for Amazon. Yeah. What about your your Bay Ridge Boy show? You could do that. Yeah, we're bringing that back. We're bringing too. that back. Yeah, because the first episode we put out suck dick, but we're gonna do a better one. <laughs> Where, wait, where'd you put it out? I didn't see it. No, we're gonna put it out on Patreon. We just put out the trailer, but after watching it, I was like, ah, oh, we were like, ah, oh, no good. But we're gonna make another one, and it's gonna be good. But yeah. even that, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, I don't know. I don't know how anybody's gonna just make money. It's either you're gonna have to do the yeah the podcasting, or you know, I don't know. I think I'm thinking of starting a, a wash black people's feet business. Yeah, where we get all you should the be the broker though you can't they don't yes. want you washing their feet they need no. they need like hot girls washing their feet right so that's or, the only just, pictures you see so you need to set up those situations and get paid on both sides well so and i Tifa, got a big business I, I, for you no yeah yeah i'll give you a little piece it'll be we'll call it black well, well black feet matter and what will happen <laughs> is we'll have antifa line up and uh, they not only will they wash the feet, they'll pay to wash the feet as reparations for there we what go. happened. And we so, just take a percentage of it. We bring, we bring the feet. The market finds a way, babe. Let me ask you, James. I mean, you're a money guy. You just know how to, you know how to squeak. Cut. You're the ultimate truffle pig. So how are you, how are you finding money? What are you doing? I think, I think right now, you know, everybody looks at the economy like, oh, is it up? Is it down? I think you can't look at anything now in this one dimensional up or down way. Like the economy, you know, when we spoke about the economy, like in March or something, mm -hmm. I, was, I was saying, if this, if this lockdown goes past April, which by the way, you're not allowed to talk about that anymore. But if this lockdown goes past early to mid April, there's gonna be a real big problem. And that's what's happened. Like now the economy has changed. It's not like we're gonna go back to normal. You can't predict the future. The economy is just completely tilted in a way that it never has before so there's an extra trillion dollars that is just lying around that nobody is spending and then there's 40 million people out of a job so and they, they're not meet the money and the people are not meeting and everyone's unhappy and people are getting sick and people are protesting they're protesting for black lives matter but if they had if if everybody was prosperous and making a lot of money then nobody would be you know protesting right now everybody would be going to their job so right. Things have things. It's like a slingshot. You pull the slingshot back, and it shoots really far when you let it go. But if you pull it back too much, it breaks. And so, so if you had to guess, your best guess. How, what do you think happens? What, uh, yeah. what what needs to happen? What's what, your idea to get out of this? What do we need? A dictator or communism? Which one? Uh, definitely not communism. But that's the direction that people kind of want it. Uh, but that's 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 really bad. Uh, particularly bad right now, everybody would basically be, there would be no jobs at all if there was communism. And I don't know if we come back as strong. We were locked down too much. And, but, but, but right now for yourself, for each person, you got to think 
entrepreneurially. Like 55 million people have now applied for unemployment. So the stable job, anything that people thought was stable, it's like more than one out of three Americans have applied for unemployment and have been furloughed from their jobs. So that was like, turned out the biggest risk of all was having a normal job. And the only way to survive is to keep hustling and figure out how to make money. You guys have to show your feet. On, yeah, you got to show your feet on, on fans only pages. Well, yeah, it's like one of those things where it's like now it's like, hey, like going on a fans only page, if you got like a rock and hot bot in RHB, it's like you're making money when nobody else is. I mean, the, is the average American is losing money no matter what right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the average American before this all started had $400 in savings. So right now the average American doesn't have any money. And you see it on, there's food lines that are blocks long, miles long. People don't have jobs. You have AOC saying maybe people should never work again. And I'm not quite sure how that happens. And, you know, there's, they don't know how big this stimulus should be. What they're trying to do is they're trying to replace dollar for dollar all the money that was lost. Straight in white the males is what they're trying to replace. Right. <laughs> yeah, which is a which is a problem. So how about this idea? What do you think about this? Everybody you know, gets three dollars. Yeah, everyone gets three dollars. And you know, all you know, these broads, you know, these broads lately, they've been uppity. So what do we this is when we hand the country over to the broads and say, hey dames, you guys run it. We give it to them right now where it's a shit storm. So then we watch them fuck it up and then we could we could say, you see, we should have never given you the right to vote. What do you think about my <laughs> ideas? Well, you know, I, I agree with J.K. Rowling is that biological women have been losing the rights that they turf. fought for. I knew yeah, you absolutely. were a turf. She's a turf, and I'm a turf. She's a turf, yeah. <laughs> what about this? Should we just go back to, like, just forgetting about the third world countries and all that stuff? Just be like, listen, I don't fucking know. We'll make something up and just, like, just get the money out of them, just exploit them, just so America can keep winning. Because yeah. I feel like we care about everybody else too much. We got to try to save everybody. Should we just go back to being like, fuck everybody, we're going to play pretend? Well, we kind of been doing that. Like everybody's kind of like arguing about these people's rights and these people's rights, and which is fine. But look, Yemen's having a, a genocide right now. Myanmar. What, are, what which, the fuck is Yemen? Is that a yeah, place? It's a place which is is because I want some Yemen not, potatoes. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I want some Yemen potatoes. I, I I wouldn't be able to point it out on a map, and yet people are getting killed. I there. would be able to point it out on a map. It's it's in a sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, okay. Oh, that sand council my daughter's making. What is that, Yemen? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, Myanmar. Do you know where Myanmar is? I don't know where it is. There's a major genocide happening there. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the the, the, the head of Myanmar is won the Nobel Peace Prize in the 90s for fighting for democracy. Now she's the head. She's killing off all the Muslims. So there's a huge there you go. in Myanmar. Well, that's so, well, you know, you ask us, you know, talk about like what's been pissing me off. Do you know what actually truly has been pissing me off? And I yelled about this on WEPA last week and Yonsei talked about it, about how in San Antonio, if you say the Wuhan virus or the China virus, it's considered hate speech. But yet in China, they're taking members of the Muslim community, blindfolding them, shaving their heads and putting them in re-education camps. But we're so cucked out in this country that if you say anything against them, and the, or if the NBA player says to free Taiwan because they're in such bed with, with you know, NBA China, then, you know, you get crucified. But yet what they're doing to Muslim people in their country, allegedly, that would never happen here. Yeah, it's not even allegedly. Those people are going into, are shipping out to concentration camps. Like, it's, it, it's, it's horrible. Or, uh, I don't know, just every, all over the world, everything, everything is basically going upside down right now. Like, China's killing people in, in Portland. What is going on there? The mayor of Portland was the funniest video I had ever seen where he was yeah. both tear gassed by the feds and attacked by the protesters at the same time. And he I had know. to run with his armed guards. He had to escape. So it's like... So that's you, the thing. You can't give it... There's nothing that you can give these people, right? They just want anarchy. There's not a thing that we could say, okay, we did this. Like, even if whatever they're protesting about anything if we remove trump if the people who killed brianna taylor were arrested right now if we gave everyone rep if we gave every black person in the country reparations they would still protest and still light the courthouse on fire do yeah, you believe that i i do because it's not it's not going to be enough nothing's going to be enough right now and the reason is right. is because everyone's broke by the way reparations might be enough and you know what i'm kind of for reparations i have to say I'm down. you know you, you know why 
if you just drop an extra $2 trillion on the economy, it's going to get spent. Everyone's going to get jobs. On it's Jordans. Not gonna, it, 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 buy Jordans, buy Yeezy. Yeah. But by the way, Kanye West for president. Kanye West for president. Yeah. Let's everyone have reparations. The whole thing can't get funnier than it is now. So you might as well just go to an extreme and see what happens. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's irreparable. I think we should just look for business opportunities. What do you think we, what do you think about a savior business where like right now the market's ripe for like the savior coming back, like a Jesus figure. What if we find some fucking kid, some orphan, right? We, we brainwash him, tell him he's Jesus. We push him out there. You know, we puppet the kid out there on the streets and we fucking get a bucket going and he starts doing miracles or whatever. You know, we teach him a little magic, have him hang out with David Blaine, use a little bit of your money to have David Blaine teach him a few fucking magic tricks. And then we push the kid out there in the poor communities and get those fucking poor dollars, baby. Let's go. What do you think? Jesus is uh, back. Uh, brought to you uh, by the history hyenas. Again, the great reason for reparations. As long as there's money to spend, they'll spend it. Everybody will spend it. We'll spend it. If I, if, you know, if you guys had more money, we'd all spend it. If I had more money, I'd spend yeah. it. So yeah, well, as long as you keep spending the five hundred a month on the Patreon, you're good, baby. <laughs> you're paying. I mean, Patreon's a great thing, right? Like you guys are are making a living from the Patreon. We're making Everyone, a we're making I, I feel like, look, of course, like you know, the Andrew Schultz of the world and the Tim Dillons are doing phenomenal, but I feel like we're right behind them in the sense of I think the good thing we did is put invest a lot in the Patreon because we're a rare. Where a lower percent, a, a, way more of our peers are not making any money right now, like at all. And we've been able to not make as much money as we did in 2019, but we're still making money, which I think is a good sign through a pandemic for yeah, us. You guys have doubled down, obviously, on the podcast. You're doing Weapon in the Morning. You're doing History of Hyenas, which I want to talk about in a second. But your Patreon is gone from like, what were you a year ago on Patreon? How many members? Well, when the quarantine started, we were at like, what were we? We were at like maybe like 2,000, 2,500 members. Yeah, I think we've like tripled. And Why now not? we're like 3,900. Yeah, and, yeah, and our money tripled. went from like 18,000 to now it's like $31,000 a month. Yeah. And, if, and if, what, do you, what do you think separates out you guys from other comedy podcasts? Um, I think it's our accuracy. Um, our his like people come to I almost us. Laughed at that one. Yeah, they come to us for how accurate our history research is. We yeah. really tell it like it is, and exactly as it happened. And people really enjoy just we're the ones who tell history honestly. Yeah, yeah. And I think especially on our Patreon, it's like you can look at every Patreon. I urge someone to look through all whatever fifty thousand Patreons that are out there. Nobody puts as much stuff on that Patreon as us. Yeah. I mean, it's everything. If you are just at the $10 level, you get about, seriously, you get about 30 to 40 more episodes a month than the next closest person. Yeah. At $10 a month. We also have the most trans fans of yes. any podcast. That is a documented fact. The New Yorker did an article about it. You can go back and read it. Go to New Yorker slash history hyenas.com. I think I, I think a lot of professors are writing about it, how all the trans audience has been attracted Absol to fucking absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. That professor at Yale, the guy who wrote about hydroxychloroquine, also wrote about you guys and, and trans. Um yeah, absolutely. I, I have I have one theory. So I, I, I was looking up the definition of a cult. And uh, I have one theory. If we're gonna go down the definition, and I feel like okay. history of hyenas has some qualities, which is which yes. is good. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. And this we, and sac we already good. sacrificed emoji face. We're Yo, on our yeah. We sacrificed Zach Isis and emoji face. <laughs> okay, yeah. here, here we go. Definition of cult. A specialized vocabulary. Boom. Okay. You've got like Yo, you know, we got every turn. Yeah, anything. Everything. We got a whole Wayne language. Jean, it is, you know, it, it's what it is. You're a three dollar bill. Three dollar yeah. bills. Peace. Uh, yeah, peace, she's a peace, crack cute, you up and clean you out. Clean me out. Fully, FCF, fully charged <laughs> <laughs> And then, number two, levels of we, achievement. we don't have editing control on this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we don't have editing control. I know. I'm going to I'm gonna have to figure out. I'm going to have to figure out. I, gonna have We're to not live. Are we live? <laughs> <laughs> We're streaming straight to your Patreon. Oh, great. Have, yeah, yeah, sorry about that, yeah. Jay. Yeah, you're going to have to yeah. just do a little edit. Yeah. Just, yeah. What he just, meant is, yeah, you know, the it's uh, it's, it's cigarettes. Yeah. Cigarettes. Yeah, just throw, just do me a favor. Hello. What, yeah, we're from London, uh, mate. Yeah. yeah. No, and cigarette. For, can I have an extra fag? Yeah, yeah, when I say fully charged and then that word, just bleep it out and just put Democrat over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> next thing, next thing is levels of achievement. So you guys rank the people who who come up with good names, you know, yes. or you, you used we to give do them that. the PPW, the pseudo penis of the week. Yes. There you go. So you have you have that's the second part of the definition. Uh, I'm not sure if you have this sacred text. I'm not sure if you have sacred yeah. text. Well, yes. we have uh, we. I don't know if we have sacred text. We have text that if ever got out, we'd be in a lot of trouble for. <laughs> yeah, we got. So those. we have hidden text. We got hidden text. We got private yeah. text. Oh, we wait, have secret text know? that we need to put under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Tim Dillon, the secret episode with Tim Dillon. Yeah, That's, which yes. would be real nice if you would buy that right about now. Yeah, no, <laughs> you'd be nice. You'd cough I'm, up some money. You're I'm right because up. you know. We're we're just like Scientology. They keep that hidden top level. Our Tim Dillon episode is that hidden top level. When you open it, it's just Tim Dillon's fucking naked with a rock a rock solid hard on because there's twinks in the room. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're all waiting for that episode. So it's I like kind of the holy the holy grail of the cult. That yeah. next is and you you both fit the character. You're charismatic leader. So you're, yes. you're, yep. you're doing that. Uh, sex slaves. Uh, Sex slaves, not yeah. quite in the definition, but it's yeah. Uh, ask Pinky kind of Mike it. about that. Yeah, ask fucking Pinky <laughs> Mike. Ask him what Mike. his days like when I've, he come. He gets his camera equipment shoved up his ass. Yeah, I grab yeah. one muffin, he grabs the other muffin chopper. We just bang him out. <laughs> so, so this <laughs> this goes a lot. What you just said goes along with the next part of the definition, which is aggression against quote unquote near believers. Yes, so, yes. There you go. Fuck Legion of Skanks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't believe in us, we just we tell you to go fuck yourself. Yeah. So there you go. I think but we are I, actually a cult in some ways. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think Tim Dillon's podcast has elements of that as well because he's got like the all the you know the conspiracy theories, the language around conspiracies. You know, people's you know are are in a hierarchy depending on how much they know about each conspiracy. So he's yeah. got he's got elements of that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why Timmy and I, we you know me, honest and Tim, Tim, we talk all the time. We're a couple screwed in kids. I mean, the the, the best business you can have in is being a recession friends with Andrew Schultz. is being friends with Andrew Schultz. And then the best business during a recession or hard times is start a religion. So if you're not going to wash black people's feet, religion is next. That's what it is. I, I think that's right. And I think, look, I think you've got, you've got the comedy and the cult thing going on with History Hyenas. That's what every podcast should listen to. I even think, I even think, for my stuff, okay, uh, about these issues, like what are phrases, what are, you know, what what fills in this category? Now that I'm trying to start a cult, but I think that's what attracts a community. So you have the whole right. Patreon community that's very loyal. Your your fans are very loyal, and that keeps keeps you going. When other comedy podcasts, I don't necessarily get that feeling. Now, James, when are you coming back to New York? I don't know. I don't know. I, for one thing, I think my wife has coronavirus, so we might not be allowed back ever. Are you serious? So she, she might she be. Got she's the got the air aids. She's got a cough, and she called the doctor, and they gave her all the um, antibiotics and stuff. And they're and they're basically forcing her to have a test. So she's got to get oh. the test. So well, hope she hope she's okay. In all she's earnestness, okay, yeah. And we hope your listeners know that we're comedians. We joke about everything. So everything we've said is a joke. Vanatia is just telling me that I have to say that. No, um, we're, no, yeah. you're serious historians. You have yes. PhD. I learn about history from your podcast. So yeah. if you were going to yes. teach a history class, what would be the topics you would teach? Well, I think if I, right now, for me, if it was history class, right, I, I would teach, I get really into one part of history for about three months, and then I forget about it. So about six months ago was the Revolutionary War. I was just all in on the Revolutionary War, talking about it, reading the same book, quoting the same book over and over and over again. And now it's Ulysses S. Grant. Now I've just been obsessed with Grant and the Civil War. Yeah, and what I would do is if they were paying us to give them a history lesson, I would take that money and then we would tell Debo to go in there and talk about the 1986 Mets. Yeah, the 1986 Mets. <laughs> Which, yeah, by, by the way, is, is yeah. the only time in my life I ever watched the World Series was the 1986 I, Mets. No other time in my life. Why yeah. is that? Um, it was my first year of college, and I was away, and New York Mets hadn't won since, what, 1969? And yeah, so yeah. I figured, uh, I'll, I'll watch this. I want them to win. And it was like kind of, what was it? Wasn't it like tie, like four to four or something? And there was like a tiebreaker? Yeah, and the remember. ball went through Buckner's legs. Yeah, it went through his game six. People always think it's game seven, but it's game six. And Bill Buckner, of course, a white man, ruined it. Yeah. That's, so what's gonna yeah. happen? What's gonna happen to sports? I feel everything's going down the drain. Like sports, I think. What? Yeah, they need to stay in the bubble. I think baseball is probably. I would give it a zero percent chance of finishing the season. 
but I think the NBA will be okay because they, they're staying, they're going to stay in the bubble. Yeah, and this is the time. The, the excitement's a little down because there's no fans or whatever. This is the time where you just you got to look the other way with steroids. Let these boys juice up yeah. and fucking roid rage all over each other. Seriously. I don't want to see a home run. I want to see them hit fucking Pluto. Yeah, it's so, a different... Yeah. So, by the way, why, why, do they, why are people against steroids at all? Like, here's what happens... When you're when you have a policy against steroids, is that all these little kids grow up thinking, "Oh, I'm going to be a baseball star. I'm going to be uh, an Olympic star. I'm going to be a weightlifting star, a bicyclist." And then they finally reach like the top 100 in the world, and somebody tells them, "Hey, we forgot to tell you, you need to start taking this if you want to win." Yeah. Well, we have a uh, we got a we got a steroid expert on our podcast, Chrissy. Yeah. What's it like <laughs> to do cycles? I've done a few cycles of Winstrol, <laughs> and I've never yeah. felt better. I'm back on it, and um, I. I agree with you, James, and I've been saying this. I think, especially baseball, it's so fucking boring. It's unbelievable how boring it is. And now there's no fans. Even my dad, who's watched baseball his whole life, he's like, I can't sit through a nine-inning game anymore. Have ever, have at least, if you want to do, have a steroid league and a regular league, and in the steroid league, one player, uh, one batter uh, a game gets a metal bat. They fucking put boards up around the stadium. They put the pitcher in like riot gear. And, you know, you have a chance to get an 800-foot home run, and it hits the back of the pitcher. Yeah. You know, maybe the pitcher dies, maybe he doesn't. Yeah. And, you know, seriously, because it's like, what, how long can we continue with this bullshit? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we got to adapt to the times. No more traditional sports, like Chris is saying. New sport. You got a federal fucking courthouse. You got 10 Antifa. You got 10 Proud Boys. Ultimate Let fighting. Fucking, Ultimate yeah, protester yeah, fighting. It's like a new American gladiators. Who's going to win? The communists or the fucking libertarians? Yeah. Have at it, baby. Put them in a fucking dome and let them go. I agree. Right. I so agree like, with that. Like, how many people, like, Chris, when you started taking steroids, I don't even know if it's a joke or not. When you started taking steroids, did someone say, like, hey, man, if you want to be great at basketball, <laughs> take this? First what happened was break? his jump got a little bigger, but then occasionally he would punch a few meter mates. <laughs> it's what it is. what happens, you yeah. know? You yeah. just no. randomly punch a Chinese on the street. It I, happens. It's what happens. It's called roid rage. I was 19 years old. I was 19 years old. I did a fucking cycle of Winnie. We used to call it Winstrol. And yeah, I mean, well, you know. But, but why did you take it though? Like, why, why did you think that that would be a good thing? And by the way, I'm not arguing whether it's a good thing or not, but why did you take it? Because I, I don't know, dude. Because he was playing basketball and he needed to try to compete with the blacks. What are you fucking asking? Yeah, what are you asking? For? Yeah. I mean, fucking, it's a simple answer for a fucking question like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a fucking white kid. He was yeah. playing basketball. There's a lot of fucking blacks to play basketball. You want to jump higher? You got to take a little fucking winstrel. What do you want yeah, from me? That's what it is. A lot of fucking It's just a character. That's just joking. Truth. Yeah. I mean, dude, my vertical leap went up like four inches. I was putting up like 250, like 20 times at once. But it didn't help my jump shot. It didn't help. Like, yeah, it gave advantages, but, like, you st that's my argument with baseball. It's like, you still have to play the sport. Yeah. Like, all these, all these talks about it gives you an unfair advantage, it's like, kind of, in baseball, kind of it does. You still have to be so good at baseball. Let me ask you, James, is, like, school antiquated now? Do we even need school? Because, like, Elon Musk's company, Neuralink, they're going to put a Neuralink in your head, right? So it's going to cure your gay if you have those thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So and, and, do we even need, like, gay? Like, what's the deal? Do we even need to go to school anymore? Yeah, and real quick, and that would be my argument, too. It's like, okay, steroids for the body. What about steroids for the mind? You telling me when fucking J. Yao sits down, he's not on school steroids? I mean, the kid comes from a Chinese family. I mean, sure, you're telling me you, you wouldn't watch a Special Olympics if they started giving those guys steroids? Let's get smart here. Well, also, every kid now is taking Adderall. Have you ever taken Adderall? Exactly. Absolutely. That's I fucking steroids. just snorted it before this show. <laughs> yeah. Adder Adderall probably adds like 20 or 30 IQ points for three hours. So, like, Adderall. It's steroids. Absolutely. Yeah. I Are you fucking believe, kidding me? Before my, every podcast, Chrissy takes Adderall, but he likes it a specific way. He likes to eat things with his asshole. So yeah. he's gotta, we got to put it on the floor, and he scoots around and gets it in there. I it get, suck it, it up. Gets to the, it gets to the bloodstream that much faster. So yeah, every you know, time, every time I, before I start this podcast, I put some Adderall on my ass, and I do about nine rounds at home. <laughs> So about a nine-round boxing match. The kid likes to do a little blow now. It's Things have changed. It's Corona times. It doesn't count. It's true. It's Everything's different. The whole James, the we whole did research. a few lines of blow before this episode. Excuse us. No, it's okay. I, I, I'm I on Adderall, so it's okay. I'm very upset because fucking Tom Hanks is a pedophile, and he's invaded Greece, so I don't know what to do. Wait, Tom Hanks invaded Greece? I don't care about he, the other part, but let's... Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's become a Greek citizen, and... So Are you him kidding? And yeah, no, him and true, Rita, yeah, yeah, and there's rumors that he has 
escape there because the Greeks, uh, their government has tried to make pedophilia a disability. That was in okay, 2012. That this morning. The Greeks were, were ahead yeah. of the curve, yeah. Well, they so were ahead of it, the curve like 2,500 years ago on this. They yeah. Jeffrey Epstein was Greek from 2,500 years ago. You could see him I know. There's statues of him in Greece right now. I, I was going to say Jeffrey Epstein, I like to call him Socrates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing about the statues is it kind of gave away that all us Greek kids, we got limp, tiny penises. Yeah. They look like little baby pumpkins. Yeah. So, well, James, James, they're got, all James, balls. Come on, let's get to it. You had Andrew Yang on last episode, very respectable presidential candidate. Me and Chris uh, want to know, how yeah. big's your dick? Are you cut? What's up? <laughs> yeah, Andrew Yang. I know, guy. Did, By the did, way, did you talk to him? Or was it a fucking piece? Was his translator there, or did he just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, by the way, Andrew Yang's over six feet tall. Did you know that? Holy shit, didn't man. fucking know that. Why did you call him? Did you call me Yao Ming a few times? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, and I, I'm, I'm biased. Like, I, I was surprised to hear that he was over six feet tall. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, well, but, but, but is he, he's an actual friend of yours, right? No, I mean, we've texted before. That's the first time actually we've ever quote unquote met over video and stuff. And, I, and right. it was fun. Like he's he's a great guy, actually. I I, I like him. Wish, I wish he had been the candidate. And I don't know. He I'm was not my favorite candidate. Uh, in all earnest, uh, being earnest for a second, he was my favorite candidate because at least he was dealing with the realities of like what the economy is going to be and what it is and how robots are taking over. I mean, that's what's happening. I mean, there's no jobs anymore. I mean, you know what I mean? We're all podcasting. That's why truth is what up for grabs. That's why nobody says the truth anymore because the truth kind of puts us all out of business we gotta have shit to talk about on podcasts Let, so fuck the truth it, it's all about the interpretation of the truth exactly there's nobody joining our fucking patreon i didn't listen i didn't listen to the end of the episode but i know yang did because i know he took a financial too is he making money now is he just selling dvds of his speeches <laughs> and hair salons <laughs> no he's on he's got a podcast and he's on cnn all the time and he's got his uh he's got a like a charity or a <laughs> organization humanity forward so oh, yeah, he, he's getting ready. How did he? Uh, how did he convince you to hire his son to be your producer? <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah. that took some doing, but but Jay Jay proved his loyalty and yeah. Jay yeah when I when I saw call. when I saw you post it up, I said, oh, I thought Ali Wong said she didn't do podcasts. <laughs> oh yeah, what's happened to Ali Wong lately? Where's she? <laughs> Who knows? She Who don't do podcasts. <laughs> Who no, I, I thought she's your knows. producer. She's one of my closest friends. I don't even give a fuck. I love you, Ali. If you see this, you're one of my closest friends. We're just friends. kidding around. We're joking around. I mean, whatever. I love Ali. I spoke to her the other week. She's doing good. She's uh, She's got do you kids. Really, do you really speak yes. to her? Like, do you, like, yes. call people he up really and does, say, hey, yeah. yes. uh, hey, I'm just calling everybody in the comedy world, making sure you're okay? No, she just called me and was like, so what's going on? Like, you know, she's just, like, she's loaded. Great, and she's asking me, like, what are you doing? So you're doing, like, skits? I think she called them skits. She's like, are you still doing Marisa? She's like, you know, she's like, do you need a job, like, cleaning my house? Things like that she was asking me. <laughs> Which I'm down. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm down. James, which, by the way, I will. When I first met Giannis in 2009, I offered to carry his uh, equipment to a bar show he used to do called Bar 4 to get stage time. And I offer the same to you now. I'll carry your equipment if you want to throw me some cash. Yeah, I'll fucking carry <laughs> you to and from your podcast. Yeah, that's the next level of Patreon. You got to set the next level of Patreon up. So, you know. Yeah. But, uh, no, I think... James, uh, our fans want you to buy the Tim Dillon episode bad. So, may, can you help us create the scheme? Because you know, you know a lot of rich people. If every big money person put in a little drop in the bucket... Look, we'll lower the price here's, to 100 grand if you're serious about this. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Tim Dillon has paid me 600 grand to Fuck. not buy the episode. Tim That's said, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> listen, James, we know you got the money. We know you can buy this episode. Tim's really afraid of something. You guys have something on Tim. He gave me a check, wired the money, 600,000 to not buy the episode. He's, his Patreon's doing really well. And, it is uh, doing really well, yeah. That fuck it. I'll tell you what, Tim, there's only one thing Tim Dillon fears, and that's Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates to him is just coming around with little needles, and he's going to get us all. So what'd you take from the Andrew Yang app? What do you think? What, what did you like about it? What do you think? I think that... He's, he's more right than I thought about UBI. Like, I initially thought that 
technology is great. And every time there's been new technology in the past, it's created huge industries that required millions of people to fill jobs. And like, who the hell wants to have a manufacturing job anyway? Like, let's get rid of the manufacturing jobs. Everybody should be, you know, some sort of AI worker or whatever. But he made the point that he just basically said, that's not true. And I believed him. <laughs> so it's yeah. as simple as that. Like he right. said, like, if you, if there's some industries there, it will create more jobs and we can find plenty of uh, anecdotes for that. But other industries we could find as well that like the, and he always mentions the truck driving industry. We just don't know. Like there's going to be millions of truck drivers unemployed and we just don't know if there'll be enough jobs. It's just a guess. Will there be enough jobs to replace them or not? And so you need a UBI. And here's the thing. Clearly we can afford it. We were all saying before, oh, we can't afford this. Well, they just printed up like two or $3 trillion. They're printing up another couple trillion dollars. No problem. So clearly we could have afforded a UBI. So I kind of think he's, he's right now. Now, what do you think about aliens? You think aliens are the ones supplying that money? Because now I really feel like, Giannis and I really feel like they're floating the idea of aliens out to tell us like it'll be front page news for real by the end of 2020. Yeah, like correct me if I'm wrong. Last week, the Pentagon did say they have a surprising announcement about UFOs that they need to make now. Yes, and they yes. never made it. No, they haven't. It's kind of like their Tim Dillon episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, when do you I, think they're going to make it, James? If you had to get, like, what do you honestly think about all that? What's your opinion? I think they're. I think two things. One is even it's further. One of, we, one of them is we're definitely so almost a hundred percent chance we're in a VR, sim, a virtual reality simulation. Like the odds yeah. that we're not in a virtual simulation is almost zero. Because if you think about it, we've had computers for, for 80 years. We've had computers since about 1950. And we almost can create a good enough VR to fool people. Not quite yet, but give us another 10, 20 years, easily we could fool people. Imagine if there's some civilization out there that's been around a billion years. Clearly, they can make trillions of VR simulations. So let's say there's one real world and there's trillions of VR simulations out there. What's the odd that we're actually in the one real world? It's almost zero. Like so when you die, thing. do you think you go find out the truth and you go back to the one true world? Or you? what do you think if you had to guess? If I had to guess, I think we just disappear into the code. Like we're just yeah. gone. We don't even know. First off, I might be the only player in this VR world. As far as I know, you guys are just part of the program and maybe I survive, but everybody else just disappears. I'll tell you what, whoever the simulators are, uh, they definitely got a sixth sense of humor when it comes to the Jews because, boy, do they make you guys jump through a lot of hoops just to survive. Yeah. Everyone's out for you guys. So these simulators are fucking the most anti-Semitic people in the world. And again, on notice. guess what? I'm Jewish. So again, I think I'm the only player. I think I signed up in some other universe to play in, in a, a game called 2020. The whole world was created on January 1st. Guess what? It looks pretty bad. Australia's on fire. What happened to that? Do, yeah. do you know what happened to the Australian wildfires? It's gone. No. It's like not, no. doesn't even exist Dude, in the what VR about, world. What about the two, three weeks after, you know, the protests after, you know, George Floyd was murdered and it was all those protests, what, Corona was gone. Remember, Corona just was out of the news for three weeks. People yeah. were like, oh, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it was gone. And then, but then that started to go down except for the Chaz. And now suddenly every, uh, every state in the South has a surge. Florida has it had its worst uh, day ever for daily new deaths yesterday. And Herman Cain, right? He, he got it from Tulsa. Nobody got anything from the protests. Herman Cain gets it from the Tulsa, Oklahoma rally. Well, I so, told you who started at the beginning of this episode. I said, Nancy Pelosi has created this virus. We know that. We've been saying it on History of Hanius forever. And we won an award. The New York Times has done an article about our accuracy and our research. And yes, that's I thought it was happened. the Washington Post. I read it in that the Washington too, Post. That as well. Yeah. Also the New Yorker, yes. Yeah. Also so, Vulture so, Magazine. Yeah, uh, Vulture, I don't know. They're, you know, high quality so comedy you, articles. And, yeah. and you, and like you're, you know, obviously, you know, you hang around a lot of smart dudes. All you, all you and your smart upper echelon friends believe in this simulation. Like that's just what it seems the most likely thing it is. I mean, again, I don't even know the odds that we know what reality is it's already almost impossible because think about everybody says, Oh, I believe in science. You know, like I better believe in this guy or that guy rather than you. Well, every 10 years, all the science changes. I mean, even the FDA, you know, re recalls like a thousand drugs a year or more. So nobody knows anything. And physicists, they have no clue about what's going on. 
nobody knows if the Big Bang actually started the, the universe. They're still trying to really figure that out. So nobody knows anything. We literally know nothing. My friend who's the ER doctor said that's the scariest part about being a doctor and having like advanced medical knowledge is knowing that I don't know anything and that if anything happens to me, you know, him talking about himself, he's like, it's all just guesses. Every medicine, every surgery, they're all just highly educated guesses or some of them are just full guesses. But nobody really knows, even met with medicine, like 100% this is going to be work out well for you or you're going to die. Yeah, my wife called two doctors yesterday. They both gave her a completely different set of medicines, complete, 100% different. And they said, this is the only protocol that works. And they both said that. They're both highly trained. They both have had hundreds of patients. No one, and again, everybody's saying vaccine for coronavirus. It's, no. a, it's a common cold. I mean, look, it'd be great if, if it exists, but I just don't understand how that would work. If, so do you think, no, what do you think? It. What do, do you think? think? Yeah, do you think the cultural relativists were right? Like, there is no truth. It's just all relative. Like, you know, your morality it may not be another person's reality. There's no, there should be no international standards, no hum, international human rights. It just depends on the culture because there is no truth and, uh, and there is no way to know. It. But you see, I don't believe that because I think there shouldn't be genocides, but maybe that's just my own personal morality and, and, and maybe yours, and maybe some people agree with yeah, it. Yeah, maybe but you what's fucking really, voted for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah, well, that, well <laughs> that's just it. If, you, if, you, if you're on one side now, if you're polarized, if you label yourself, as you guys were talking about with Thomas Sowell earlier, if you label yourself, suddenly you're on a team and you're in prison now. You can't right, right. leave that opinion. Like, look at, look at Deborah Messing a few weeks ago. You know that actress? She yeah. says... She says, oh, we need to boycott the, the gap. Which one is it? Is Deborah Messing, Will, or Grace? Which one? Because it's two girls, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, she's, she's one of those. I couldn't even remember the name of the show until you just said yeah. that. So, yeah, she's one of those. And uh, she, she said boycott the gap because they, they are doing a deal with Kanye West, and she doesn't want Kanye West to draw votes from Biden. Yeah. And Easy she got for canceled that, but, right yeah. there. She yeah, got easy for her to say. Racist. She's got fucking millions of dollars right. from Will Grace. So where does she want me to shop? Tiffany, where she shops? Yeah. Where am I supposed to get my dreams, Deborah Macing? Am I supposed to go to fucking... Am I supposed to go to Tiff? What's another high-end store? Lord and Taylor's? Lululemon's. I mean, why does anyone listen to any of these fucking actresses or actors? How did Alyssa Milano become the DNC spokesperson? What kind of fucking simulation is this where I got to listen to what Terry Crews has to say about Black Lives Matter? Here's, yeah. your, here's the fucking, here's the script that Ice Cube wrote. Now fucking read your lines and then go back in your hole and work out and get those muscles looking good so, so Chrissy can jerk off to yeah. pictures of you without your shirt off. Yeah, so I can right. jerk well, off well, to your Old Spice commercials. <laughs> look look at look at Ice Cube and, and his tweet to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Oh, no, that wasn't my favorite Ice Cube tweet. Can we Google my favorite Wait, Ice Cube tweet? Wait, what did Ice Cube tweet? say to Kareem Abdul-Fumar? So, so, <laughs> so, so Kareem... That uh, Kareem said, hey, maybe we should talk about how Hollywood or, or, or we should talk about anti-Semitism a little bit. And Ice Cube tweeted out to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and said, yo, maybe give a brother a call before tweeting that or before saying that. Like, yeah. why should people call Ice Cube about whether they're going to be anti-Semitic or not? Like, well, and, yeah. then, and then that's not considered and then that's not considered hate speech. But if I say if I just tweet. Uh, maybe there's a cure for coronavirus that will get banned right. instantly. It's like within weird. seconds. I think uh, Khomeini, the, the head of Iran, could will tweet, we need to have a, a retaliation, a strong retaliation against the US, a forceful retaliation against the US. That's not hate speech. But if you tweet out like, oh, I think this Yale professor might have something interesting to say, you'll get banned. Or if right. you do what Schultz did, if you make a like a comedy video about Ghislaine Maxwell, it gets taken down. But everybody Did else take it just down? make it. Yeah, got, got taken, taken down. down by Facebook. But let me ask you, Ice Cube actually did something worse. He actually tweeted like an anti-Semitic thing. And I knew that because that train is never late. It's whatever it is, whatever problem it is in the world, it's just it's just on its way to fate to blaming you to blaming Jews. Uh and, and yeah, he just kind of could do that. And like there's no it, there's no ramifications. There's nothing. He's not canceled. He, can you pull up that tweet? Yeah. Like he What's tweeted. What's the tweet? He tweeted. Yeah. And that was just one of them. He, he did said, another Ice Cube one. said, fuck the new world until they fix the old one. And then it's just a picture of a bunch of Jewish guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is, right? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, Wait, play Monopoly. Play Monopoly. And they're all, play look Monopoly. It, it's all like caricatures. And yeah, look at the people under black people underneath. And it's like, and he did another one. He did another symbol. He do Ice Cube symbol. He tweeted like unbelievably anti-Semitic things, blaming the Jews for everything. And you're going like, there's, it's not even a news story. Dude, right. how about, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, and by the way, I don't oh, even care a really. Lot. I like, mean, he, like I, I, Ice Cube's Ice Cube. one of my favorite rappers. Like, and yeah. who, who, if anyone listens to him, obviously. Well, you're not one of his favorite ethnicities. <laughs> no, I tried to get him on my podcast. The feelings no not way. mutual. Yeah. I Same thing. It's like, even like with Kanye West, it's like, okay, yeah, I think he was stupid. He ran for president. Whatever he said, I like the guy's music, you know? And it's also like John Leguizamo goes crazy every day on Twitter about things that I don't really agree with, but I love his movies. Here's it's the like, thing. Why, why can't I fucking do both? Listen, right. let me tell you something, James. This is how fucking weird and wild and crazy the world is right now. I think Nick Cannon is the funniest comedian in America right now. I mean, or, did you see his fucking I think special? Kanye, Kanye I, I, too. Let's just take that kid's meds and let those two go tour together. I mean, one can on. talk about how white people are devils, and the other one could just fucking, he's just off his meds. I'll go see that concert in a second. First off, which of the presidential candidates is is on their meds? Like, none of them I are know. on their meds. Like, and, and Kanye West, first off, if you're given three choices, the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and, oh, wait, there's this third one, the birthday party with Kanye West, of course I'm joining the birthday party. <laughs> Me too. Why, why would you even consider another party? A birthday party has cake and presents and Dude. hugging. and yeah. like, I agree, man. Yeah. So do you think so? So do you think, James, you know, when they come out in December or January and say we have a vaccine and it doesn't work, do you think eventually the you know, you're just going to have to open gyms back up, just going to have to open up movie theaters and we're just going to have to live with a calculated risk in 2021? Yeah. And also yeah. another question, well, how good is that Kardashian pussy? What do you think? Because well, it turns people weird. Definitely people are willing to ruin their lives. Every single one of them are willing to ruin their lives. I to, would. Yeah. To enter the gateway of heaven. So <laughs> I don't know. It must be, it must be great. It's like the whole thing. It's like, it's like Louis Dude, C. Bruce C. Jenner so cut his dick off. That's how good the <laughs> pussy was. Right. He like, he, he, <laughs> where, 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 just doesn't where, know if we're going to be okay on this one. Yeah. Where, where, where can't where guarantee that, our safety. Where is that dick now? Like, we don't even know. It's in, it's in her purse. It's, it's in, in her Caitlin's fucking purse. purse. Yeah, yeah, just in case. Just yeah. in fucking case. She wants to fucking slap just somebody Just in case with. she needs a tire gauged. I, I once, so so I was having a conversation with uh, Caitlyn Jenner's agent a long time ago. And okay, thank you for calling her Caitlyn, because we also talked on WEPA. Even they went they went retroactively and changed uh, her name to Caitlyn Jenner, won the decathlon Olympic medal. Um, in 1975, yeah. whatever. Yeah, Caitlyn yeah. Jenner won it. So yeah. you can't Bruce. say Bruce anymore. You cancel if you say Bruce. Yeah. But but this is almost to your point about steroids, what I'm about to say about, about Jenner, which is that I asked this guy, why? so this is Caitlyn Jenner. He's a Kardashian. He's a, an Olympic athlete. He changed to a woman. And then, of course, they're going to do a reality show. And within one season, it got canceled. And this guy told me the honest truth. She's She's boring. She's the most boring. You still have to be a performer. You still have to be able to be good on screen. Right. Like, right. No matter what you do, you could cut your dick off. You could win Olympic medals. They're, they still shouldn't give you a TV show. Would no. you fuck her, though? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Wait, so, okay, so what do you think's going to happen? So what do you think's going to happen? Only because she's taller than me. I really don't like That's what it is. Oh, yeah, you're a squeak. Me. Yeah, I, I like, oh, I'm. Hey, I'm five foot nine. I don't know what what's the height of a squeak is. You guys no, are not, tall no, guys. I don't squeak, know. Oh, squeak. you just made above squeak. Yeah, no squeaks. <laughs> no squeaks. Jay Yao, your producer's definitely a squeak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, you're allowed Jay, to comment anytime you want. Jay, how how he tall are you, Jay? Well. He's on the phone with the police. Yeah, he's, he's on the phone with the police. <laughs> he's calling right. the police for this Jay, podcast. Jay, how tall are you? I'm 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 uh, I think I'm one sixty eight cm. So that's what five feet five. Five feet oh five. God. All right, yeah. you're to take you translate that. Yeah, that's on our podcast. That's what we call five five. a squeak. That's a squeak, Jay Al. But that's a, squeaks <laughs> are good. It just means you're a short kid, but it means that you're probably good at soccer or whatever. You also can fit in a backpack, which is good. Yeah, your travel size. <laughs> You guys like come it. on the podcast in a few weeks. Uh, Paris Hilton's coming on the podcast. I'll fucking Are you come serious? On. Listen, James, yeah. I'll fucking live in your house. Cuz, we'll do whatever you want. <laughs> as long as that 500 keeps showing up every month. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, so so what's going to happen in 2020? Cuz, what are you going to do if psoriasis cream runs out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm just... That's why I can't wear white anymore. Once that's why I have to wear white is because it all just like, crumbles over me. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this is this is my big idea. Is I think there I'm going to make a fashion line of pajamas because Sick. you don't need any more clothes anymore. Right. Like, Absolutely. Pajamas. So right. here's what I think. 2020, I think we're going to have the biggest economic surge we've ever seen in the history of the United States in the last half of 2020. And I've actually even bet on this. I've gone to uh, there are markets where you could you could bet on. Uh, like who's going to be president or how big is the GDP growth going to be. So this, my biggest bet right now is that uh, we're going to have this economic surge uh, this quarter. So okay, well, wow, quarter right next. So, so keep the money in the stock market now, you're saying? No, because uh, so last time I, when I was on your podcast, I said go into it. And because there was so much money being poured into the economy that the stock market had to go up. But now I'm just a little bit nervous there's just too much uncertainty. There's it's too election. late. I took your advice the first time. I put all of my life savings into the stock yeah, market. Yeah, and then and then you Am won I big. Be okay. Yeah, you're you're up hundred percent at least. So, so stay, just hold, right? No, no. Now, now I'm nervous because the the there's the election is going to be insane. You know, now they're already kind of throwing out there that uh, Trump's not going to accept the election results, and Trump's saying the Democrats are going to be fraudulent. So nobody's going to accept the election and they're going to blame each other and there's going to be a civil war. And we don't know. They're going to keep threatening second waves, third waves. They're going to keep closing things down. There's people, protests are going to continue. Like why? I don't understand. Like I talk to my, what do you say to, to people when, you know, these protests are peaceful, but there's also rioting and those aren't peaceful and they're not even they're not even protesting Black Lives Matter. The rioters are there for some other reason. Hey, 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 you're saying it all wrong. All police are terrorists and all rioters are protesters. Say yeah. it with well, me. Say it with me. This is what you call the re-education camp. We're about to be all in. The gulags we're all going to have to go to where we're going to watch a video of AOC explain to us what is state-approved words, what are state-approved comedic premises, and what we call police. They're right. called terrorists, and rioters are called Care Bear protesters. Uh, that, that, yeah. It does seem to be an arts rally in Seattle still, and an arts yeah. rally in Portland. They only, yeah. you know, the fact that there's, uh, and then they would say, oh, unmarked federal troops are illegally seizing people. Have you seen pictures of those federal troops in Portland? Yeah. They're, they look fucking they're, they're, jacked. They're, yeah, they're wearing camouflage uniforms and they're carrying AK-47s. Like they're clearly marked, and yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. and and meanwhile, people the people are shooting lasers at them and blinding them. So yeah. again, the world's like upside down from what. Well, so why I'm do you not, tell someone with their money who's got money in stocks or money in you know four hundred one k's and stuff? I mean, do you have to just get all your money liquidated and have it in cash? Well. Again, things change, right? So when if they pass the stimulus and there's another trillion dollars being dropped on the economy, I would still keep some money in the stock market, but I'm not as passionate about it as I was a few months ago. But now it just seems so crazy, like the efforts to make, you know, the market, does, it does not depend on the economy. The market depends on uncertainty. So the more uncertain things are, the more the stock market will crash. The more certain things are, the more the market will go up. So the worst day of the market was March 23rd, and that was the day they didn't pass the stimulus bill, so the market crashed. The next day they passed the stimulus bill, the market has not stopped going up since then. So now they're starting to creep in some more uncertainty. You know, and then people say, well, 50 million people are unemployed, all these, you know, there's gonna be like 20 million businesses going out of business. In New York City, probably 60% of restaurants are gonna go out of business. But, and then people say, well, how's the stock market going up? And there's an answer. It's good for the companies that are specifically the big companies in the stock market right. if every store goes out of business. Like between my apartment in New York and the closest Starbucks, there are three mom and pop cafes. They all went out of business already. They're, they're for lease now. And that means Starbucks is doing better than ever. They increase market share. Right. The, the, whenever you say, oh, how's the market doing? You're talking about like the Dow Jones Index or the, the S&P 500. That's weighted by the biggest companies. The biggest companies are gain gaining market share from the 20 million businesses out of business and the stimulus money is flooding into Starbucks. Everybody still gets their coffee there and then more people than yeah. ever get their coffee there. So that's why the market gets disconnected from the world. People right. think the world's supposed to be connected to the market. It's not supposed to be. The market's only connected to, the big, to Amazon, Starbucks, Netflix, 
Apple. If Apple had a problem, then the market would go down. If Amazon had a problem, but Amazon is controls the world now. So right, they're, and they're, they're doing, and they're also those are companies that are 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 built to excel during a pandemic because yeah. they're either internet companies, well, all the companies you mentioned are internet companies. Which yeah, because yeah. what's going to happen, like, because you said 60% of these New York City restaurants, let's say, are going to go out of business, so those pe unemployment will eventually have to end. The trillion-dollar stimulus but will what just What he's saying is then you just invest in those companies that, like, deliver meals to your house or... But where are these people going to work, is my question. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, where are the they, waiters and waitresses going to go? They are they are they are not coming back to work for, for years. So even if I give the most optimistic case, because I've sort of added this all up i would say you're going to see at least 15 million people 15 million more people unemployed than than there were in february so instead of there being a three percent uh, unemployment rate there'll be at least a 12 percent unemployment rate for so a Trump's really not long get time reelected then they're no, not going to reelect also him. probably going to be violence in the streets let's just be honest there's going to be violence in the streets on yeah. the election issue i mean on the betting markets almost nobody gives him any odds of winning but what people don't realize also is that you know People always say, oh, it depends on where the economy is, who gets elected or not. But it's not where the economy is. It's the direction of the economy that's more important. And the economy will be going up. I mean, it's going to go from 20 million unemployed to 15 million unemployed. So we don't know. Like maybe people say, oh, the economy is doing great now because it's moving up. So but this is part of the uncertainty. I don't even know, like just forgetting about all the issues. What I'm scared about is the media. So let's say Trump's elected. The media is going to ramp up everything and cause fear and chaos and so on and whatever. But, and if Biden wins, we've got a, 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 a demented alleged rapist who's going to be president. So who do you want to win? Again, that's why I'm for Kanye West, the birthday party. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, the, it's the only solution that's not one of these guys. But, why but, why has the DNC served up the last two elections the two candidates that Trump can beat? Why is that? Why would they I mean you could put Venetia or me in there and we would have a better chance of of beating uh Trump than Biden. They're hiding him right now. As soon as he has to come out and speak there's going to be a problem. That's the only way Trump may win is if they see that this guy is like on the runway and about to take off. Yeah, to well, heaven. you know, think about it. Bernie Sanders, they were obviously, I mean, Bernie Sanders looked like a lock going into the, into the South Carolina primary. Like Biden hadn't won a single primary. Bernie Sanders was, was winning all the delegates. And then I was talking to a guy who's a, a, a professional campaign manager since 2000. He said, I've never seen this before. We're on a single day, four or five or six presidential candidates dropped out on the same day and suddenly supported Biden. And then he won in South Carolina. So that, how did that happen? Like Bernie Sanders was, was going to win the nomination. And by the way, you know, you guys were talking earlier on, on WEPA in the morning about capitalism versus communism and, and socialism and all that. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. The Democrats aren't socialists. They don't like Bernie Sanders. He's not a Democrat, so they don't want him to win. By the way, Bernie Sanders is just as isolationist as Donald Trump. They kind of overlap on a lot of issues. And you know, Democrats wanted their mainstream machine candidate, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, like whoever the next one is. I hope Andrew Rett Yang's the next one, but who knows? But, yeah. you know, they definitely, there was definitely some manipulation going on there. And you guys asked earlier on, on WEPA, what's, what is Marxism? And it's really interesting. The def there's really no definition. There's more a definition of what it's not. And so do you mind if I, if I add yeah, to your no. answers from this earlier? Please. So, so Marxism is when there are differences in, uh, you, you're, you're not, you're, you never use labor to make profit. And so in capitalism, you use labor to be profitable. And, and there's competition, so you make, you, you make labor as, as effective as possible and you make profits. So in Marxism, it's the creation of profits that creates classes. And as long as you're in a different class than me, there's always going to be class struggle and there's always going to be protests and revolts and it's always going to degenerate into revolution and ultimately communism. So Marxism is really about not having any profits in a system, not having class struggle, um, because that will always de degenerate into a revolution. And so that's really Marxism. 
And yeah, so socialism well, is capitalism yeah. where you, you, you try to redistribute as much as you can. So that's a little different than Marxism also. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, for me, it's like they're, bo they're both, nothing is pure because it exists in reality. So everything's flawed. Ideas got nothing to do with reality. The platonic realm is the only place where even a perfect circle exists. You can't achieve a perfect circle in reality. Nothing that is an idea is perfect. So both those ideas are not perfect. But the one thing I will give to capitalism is it seems in reality, it is the most aligned with the natural flow and state of things it, with human nature and, and uh, you know, the, the demand and supply is based on, you know, how we interact and how we progress and, and human nature. We're all kind of self-interested. And, you know, they even say, put your mask on before you put someone else's on. So what am I supposed to be? That's, does any, is that's anyone why my really wife has coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like even even our even like our little thing here. It's like it seems it happened very naturally. Like you know, we had we needed certain things, so we got uh, we we hired people to fulfill those certain things. We're all working towards a bigger goal, and we're the coolest fucking bosses around. And if they if 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 the producers don't nod right now, they're fucking fired. You're fired. <laughs> Your best has just nod, especially in the presence of Jews. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be able to release this. You know that, right? This, is, this will be the secret release. I'll have to set up a Patreon so yeah. only like Jeff Bezos could release this. The billion dollar tier. I mean, why doesn't Jeff Bezos just wear an eye patch? <laughs> well, then you got Dan Crenshaw in Texas. He's kind of ca caught the eye patch. Uh, he's monopolized that market. You know, it's the. But I want to know. Yeah, but I want to know from you. Is what I'm saying? Do you do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you like? Do you Absolutely. feel like capitalism is the best worst system or the worst? Best system. Well, think about think about what happened in March. The the entire economy got locked down, and what did you guys do? You got a little anxious. How am I gonna pursue my career? How am I gonna pursue my interests? How am I gonna make money? Got a family. How, what am I gonna do? So you doubled down on the podcast. You put you released. You're literally releasing like three times as much. And and what happened? People supported it and and rewarded your your efforts and your skills and so on and so it that you needed to do that in a capitalist economy because there was no other way you were going to get help in this way and look right. and that's what that's what the entire world is going to have to do like again 55 million people have applied for unemployment insurance so people are going to have to think of new things to do and they're going to have to there is going to be have to be some transition time while we figure this out, everyone's going to have to figure out like, oh, well, if I can't do a podcast, maybe I help people set up a podcast or maybe I help people set up like a newsletter or I help people get their Kickstarter campaigns funded. Or maybe I don't do a restaurant, but I just make my kitchen legal so I could create a menu and upload my menu to Uber Eats. And then if the menu works, that's the food I'll start creating. If the menu doesn't work, then a week later, I'll open up a new quote unquote restaurant. Like everything's tilted. And every, there's money, but no one's, you can't just get it. You can't go back to your job and get it because there's no more jobs. And that's going to continue. Like, again, all the restaurants are out of business now. Like, do I don't know if you remember, remember the Chinese restaurant that was across from Stand Up New York? Bobby yeah, Kelly, yeah. The, Cube, the Cuban Mick, the Cuban yeah. Fusion. Out of, out of business and Sad. the place next to it, out of business. Like, they've they're been all there for out years. Of yeah. They've been there for like, since Cuba was taken over by Castro, they've been there. So right. it's gone. But does it worry you? Does it worry you that like there's you? Because a lot of times I listen to these kids who are protesting stuff like that, and I can't. I you know it's like you can kind of read through the lines. You can sort of there. I I kind of feel like they want communism. Like it's again come back where they're going like, look, communism's never had a fair shake because America's always intervening, trying to undercut it, and so let's give it a whirl here. You got you know, intellectuals calling each other comrade again. And I'm going like, are we really going to try this a fucking again? Like, yeah, cause the, even the, the, even the CCP in China had to open markets. They, they always go, look at, look at, um, look at Scandinavia. Like you do know those are capitalist countries. You fucking morons. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think kids understand that. I think kids think that it's a matter of, uh, rights per person. Like, so you have to, uh, whoever has the least powerful voice needs to have a stronger voice. And the reality is 
people are different. Some people are like Jeff Bezos are great at building an Amazon. Some people are great at sports. Some people are comedians. People are just different and not everybody should make the same amount of money. You get paid according to the market. Here's the problem with pure Marxism is that competition is bad. So you can't even have two companies compete with each other because then there's they're duplicating energy. So my, someone working for me is doing the same thing as someone working for you. And so they're, we, we, know we have to incentivize them differently. We have to make them work harder so I know that I can compete against you. So there's no competition. So what does that mean? It means one authority, the central government, plans right. everything. Now, I don't know if you've written on Amtrak lately or the subway, like, is, or, or I don't know. Stinks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anything run by, have you, have you sent a letter with the post office lately or do you yeah. use Federal Express? Like exactly. things run by the government aren't really that good. No. So, right. and All then right. you look at, and then you look at, look at, um, colleges. You guys asked about education earlier. Look at colleges. Colleges have become so stupid because colleges because the government said look let's give everybody everybody who can't afford let's just loan them the money and by the way you can't even declare bankruptcy you have to pay back that money it's the only type of debt you're not allowed to declare bankruptcy for so they started loaning students money and tuition went up huge like much faster than 10 times faster than inflation over the past 50 years and every school now is shutting down and still charging their tuition it's like it's like it's part it, it's part of the VR simulation. Let's just see how stupid we could get. We'll still charge these idiots 70,000 because the government's going to pay it and there's no use for it. Right. So do you, you think a communist agree. you think a communist revolution is going to happen or no? No, because people are going to people are going to realize, "Hey, we just changed every we're starting to change everything and we're not getting anything good at it. Where's my food? Where's my education? Where's where's the bus? Where how come my letter didn't get there? Where's the stock market? Nothing's going to exist anymore." Like, and there's not going to be any jobs either. So what do you think? Do you think, do you think, let's say at this time in 2021, we're still going to have to be wearing masks in and out of places and it's going to look like it is now, or you think it might look closer to what it looked like in 2019? I don't think it's going to be 2019, but since, you know, the lockdown, I always thought the lockdown had to end in April. If we were going to see back to normal, I think we're going to just see something new. And so so 2019 and before that, that's over. We, you don't expect to see that again ever in our lifetime. Never, never, not not forever. And that's sad. And I don't and I don't necessarily think things are going to be bad, but I think there's a chance for it. Like you 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 feel it in the air. Like that's why there's violent protests happening and nobody's doing anything about them. And by the way, we all agree with the underlying peaceful origins of it, but. I don't agree. We, the, you know, you saw the videos in Soho. They were trying to break into residential buildings and throwing Molotov cocktails. Like, and those weren't the protesters. Those were tagged along somehow. So right. that kind of stuff is happening now, and it will continue to get worse. I don't. Something has to change it. Maybe another stimulus package. Maybe if the media backs off, like the media is certainly lighting the fire here, right? You, you don't get. Yeah, really like, are. what do you think? Like, could 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 a president come in? Like, could. Could one way to solve it to be like to ban Twitter, how like they ban TikTok? Like, could you ban Twitter and that might help? Like, like pull back that, social media? The problem, that's a very authoritative thing to do. That's what or, they do in or China. Or make it, may pay money for it. Like, it's not free anymore. No, you know what they could should do? That? You know what's really, you know what really fucking pisses me off? You asked at the beginning of the episode, if you want to know, I do have something. And it pisses me the fuck off is that these tech companies... They now are, you know, basically legislating speech and making all these rulings and saying how this has been reviewed by a human and it, it, it threatens all these uh, groups and, you know, they, they're so they're so now they're finally intervening. But all these fucking fake accounts and bots that have been roaming around unregulated, stoking the flames of division and derision for years and years and years. They just let them run free and they let them run free because it's good for business, because it's high engagement. It makes sure. the membership net level up. It's inflated their fucking business. So Twitter, of course, likes uh, some bot having 20 accounts because they go, look, when they go to their shareholders, they go, look, we have 50 trillion members. We're doing good. It's like, yeah, those are 10 rush 
question people with fucking machines. Do you think normal people are on Twitter? Ask any one of your normal friends with a family and kids if they've been on Twitter in the last six years. None of them have. It's mentally ill people, comedians, and Russian bots. That's it. Well, and you know, in China, there's something called the 50 Cent Army. And the, and the mentally ill people and the comedians overlap in the Zen diagram. Everybody I know who's gotten rid of Twitter or Instagram or brought it down to at least one minute a day or most one minute a day, they all have extreme improvements in their mood. Every single one of them. I mean, James, the Absolutely. biggest Black Lives Matter page on Facebook that ever was, 700,000 members, was a fake Russian account running it. How wild is that? That's a fact. I, I didn't even know that, actually. I gotta look That's that a up. Fact. You it's have, a weapon in the morning. Yeah, have Jay Yao. <laughs> Jay Yao, you can Google that right now. Well, and, and it's true. The China, China employs literally, I think it's about 3 million people to go on the U.S. Twitter and start arguing with people. And of course, Twitter loves it. They make up anytime you have an argument on a Twitter, uh, on Twitter, they make a penny every time you reload that page. Has they responded yet? And it is depressing. Like I, I for the first time these during this pandemic, I've been like, getting sucked into arguments on Twitter. And I'm so depressed by the end of the day when I do. Like, I never used to do this. And it's like sucking me in. It, it, it's huge. And you're probably not even arguing with a real person. You're arguing that, with someone who is there to get you to argue. That could be. And then I realize, yeah. oh, this person has an anonymous name. But you're absolutely right. They get yeah. paid per, for, for, they don't want to get rid of those anonymous people. They get paid for it. And you Are know, you, would, you, would you consider getting rid of Instagram and Twitter on your end? Oh yeah, absolutely I would. I I never for 10 years I never hit the home page on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. I just I would update just like you update your stuff cuz you're in the media business, you're in the content business. I have to update my pages and stuff. But now because I've been curious about the news and interpreting the news and thinking about it and what's going to happen next and what should I look into, I've been on these pages and I can't believe how you know, it's disturbing about the society. And so I get sucked in sometimes. I'm trying not to. Yeah, like you, you could only use it to post what you have to post and then put it away and not look at it again until you have something to post. It might, you know, that might be the answer. Would you consider for your Patreon and ours, like if you went with Chris to Panache and like you, you guys both got, got haircuts, ha haircuts <laughs> and you, you let Stefano fucking gel you up and throw, throw, a, throw a part in your hair? Uh, only if it's part of a Bay Ridge Boys episode. So actually, that would be a fucking yeah. hilarious Bay Ridge Boys episode. Yeah, if we got James to go to Panache. Look, before this you know pandemic, what? we were gonna go to Greenland. You know, yeah. now it's yeah. like screwed up all our plans. Yeah. No, man. I I know, dude. Well, listen, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's been nice talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Did you? How do you achieve your hair to look like that? Do you just take off a winter hat before the podcast starts? No, I just sleep, and then when I wake up, I don't do anything. Like literally, I got up and came to do this podcast. Do you just stick your finger in in, the, in an electrical socket yeah, every like, morning, aka your belly button? <laughs> <laughs> it's a natural Jewish thing too. It's a little easier. Jews have the right uh, technique to do this. So yeah, Bubba's. Yo, but uh, can I call you later and you pick up the phone and you give me some advice? And also, when are you going to read Colin Quinn's new movie script? Uh, this weekend, I've got it literally on my schedule to do that. I'm going to read that. I'm excited. To read. I like the first version. I'm curious what he what he rewrote. So yeah. And look, you have to tell me what did you pitch to Comedy Central? Me? Yeah. I I pitched a a, a, a transgender romantic comedy where uh, they, they should have definitely picked that up. Yeah. Why they did keep they pick switching that up? genders? When one's a boy, the other one switches to a girl. They and they keep getting it wrong, so they keep trying, and the timing's just always off. I, that's the new Will and Grace. Yeah, James, how wild is this? I went for an audition last week, and it was about some thing, some like barbecue show or backyard show, and they were like, "Oh, if we gave you money for a perfect bar, what would you do?" And I said, "I do this, I do that," and they said, "I I put an American flag in the back," and they were like, "Does that mean you're a Donald Trump supporter?" And then like almost like ended the call. I was like, "Wow, we live in a fucking wild world where you can't even say." that you proudly put an American flag up, then you're deemed as not fit for the entertainment business. Yeah, uh, it's the same, but here's what, here's what I think. I think television might be over. Like, yeah. uh, like, Oh, I know that. Who cares anymore? Now, when I sit down, I actually just go straight to YouTube. I don't go to Netflix. Like, unless someone specifically says, oh, you have to watch this one show. Uh, all the shows, I'm done with all the shows. They're done. And yeah. YouTube, I'll watch, you know, I'll watch whatever. Like, I don't think... 
I think that's another thing that's going to change is content. Content creation is the thing everybody should be doing now. So comedians are sitting at home waiting to go back on stage. They may never get to do that again, but everybody yeah. should be creating content. Like, yeah, and I, I agree. I, I agree. Doing, in all earnestness for a second, I actually think what me and Chris is doing, I think we are actually in the future. We're doing like, because, you know, I did a morning show for Fusion where, it, you know, and it was like we had tons of producers, a budget, big studio, and the show just wasn't good. But me and Chris just getting up for 15 minutes, half hour before, picking some news stories, wind us up. We do a couple lines of blow, and then we just talk. It, it's uh, you, you watch it. We're entertaining, no? I mean, for yeah, a couple I, of sissy I, boys? I am not kidding when I say I get my news in the morning. I basically sit here, play Chris online chess. Chris is playing chess, with his dick listen, right now. Listen, what listen. are you doing? <laughs> I, mean, this, I mean, entertainment has now gotten to this because every story's been told. I mean, now we just do blow on air and Chrissy plays with his piece what while you is. talk. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, if you were to write like a novel or to tell, or make a movie, you can't even make this shit up now. Like there's nothing yeah. more fictional than, okay, right now, in the past week, asteroids, aliens, uh, uh, you know, the genocides, there's vaccines spreading all over. There's there's warlords and autonomous zones. Like you can't. The Rock commented on Andrew Schultz's video on Instagram. The world is wild <laughs> right now. What did The Rock say? He said, he said, power to the people, brother. And I was like, yeah, that's what The Seriously, Rock is. Seriously, who's, but, but Andrew Schultz, it's like, who's doing better than, I mean, that guy is fucking actually speaking the truth. He's never been on, he, and he's never done stand up on TV once. I mean, he's never had his own show or anything. So it's like, it just shows you that I think what you're saying is true. Like, He's probably the the hottest comic in the country right now, and it's all on Instagram. And nobody, no gatekeepers, no producers, him and his team. Yeah, just turn your fucking phone to the left. Yeah, it's it's only it's only now the the without anything without the gatekeepers is gonna succeed. The gatekeepers didn't work, like it failed. We see it in in the news, we see it on sitcoms like all the sitcoms are, are boring we see it on everything and you're right andrew schultz you guys tim dylan where are all the other comedians i don't see any other comedians out there now right i, I agree know with you, i agree with you man I agree with and, you. We're trying, like, the only gatekeeper now is i guess is the algorithm on youtube it's like the new gatekeeper yeah yeah so people will figure that out right so there's a lot of platforms eventually you know maybe they'll be you know, everybody will kind of find the, their platform. Like you guys have, like, even if there wasn't YouTube, I would listen on Patreon. So as right. long as you have like more than one platform and your audience is loyal, you could like the challenge TikTokers have right now is how do they get those 20 million followers off the platform and follow them somewhere else? So they're, that's their issue. So, but I agree. Anything with gatekeepers is, is dead. I was pitching a bunch of shows right before the lockdown, got rejected everywhere for like the eighth time in a row. And, but then I started thinking I'm getting more views on my podcast than I would ever would on like a cable TV yeah. show. For instance. That's what Joe Rogan, that's what Joe Rogan. That's the way he played the game. He was going, why would I do any of that? I have everything already. And he held out for 10 years or whatever and got 300, 400 mil. It's true. You know, I think it is with comedy, especially it's the comedians who come up with the jokes. It's our instincts that make things funny. Now we have uh, an apparatus and a medium to let that fly. And now that the public has gotten a taste of that, they'll never go back to produce content in the way that it was because it just comes off as contrived. It's like trying to watch a late night set after HBO came out. It's like we're all conditioned to think, oh, this is all you can do. And then HBO came around with Def Comedy Jam. And then, like, you went back and you watched the Carson set. And you're going, like, this is bullshit. You know, but even though you watched it at the time and you're like, this is great. So it's like the Internet has changed people's tastes. They've conditioned them to uncensored content. So it just seems cheesy when you watch something that's scripted or in a movie. It just doesn't come across the same because you're like, I could watch Yanni P and Chrissy D and those guys just go wild off the cuff and I know that it's genuine because those two guys are not fully straight human beings. Yeah, you have you're not in a camp. You're not you're not in a labeled on one side or the other, which right. is how people that you people should rise above all the arguing, all the twittering and and uh, you know, oh my god, this person said this, they have to be canceled. We have to take down Abraham Lincoln's statue for some reason. Like you 
you rise above that and you point out the absurdity. People just want to know where's the absurdity. Here's what people want. They need, they desperately need stuff to talk about with their friends. That's if you, so you get that either from the news and, and, and if you're, or you get it from your team. So what did AOC tweet this morning? That's what my team said. So I got to now say it at the cocktail party tonight, or you get it from like podcasts like yours, you know, Tim's, Andrew Schultz's, rarely mine, but you know, whatever. And uh, that's how you want to give people things to talk about. If you can't do that, then, then you're out of business. But Absolutely. gatekeepers are not involved at all, though. Will, yeah. you, will you be in a Bay Ridge Boys episode if we, if we wrote a part for you? I'll, I'll I, definitely be in the Bay Ridge Boys. bringing that up just gave me a good idea. I'll, I'll definitely be in the Bay Ridge Boys episode. Maybe, I, maybe I'm going to be the Jesus that we, that we bring out onto the streets <laughs> of Brooklyn. Yes. And yeah. I'm the second coming. I'm, I'm Jewish looking enough. We make money, so, yeah. So, and that's how we make money, yeah. But I was thinking, no, because the scene I was thinking is like uh, you and Chrissy make out, and the, you cool with that? <laughs> I, I think I'd have to ask Robin, you know, she, if she dies from coronavirus, then yes. If she doesn't die from coronavirus, she's not going to be for it. Yo, Yo, if she dies from coronavirus, at least she could teleport. <laughs> right. If she dies from coronavirus, then we'll find out if it's a simulation or not. Because I'm sure yeah. she was sent here to keep me on track you know, for, for 2020, the game. So, yeah. Listen, we just wanted to let you know that your wife, Robin, is definitely for Rome and she's a pup, 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 peas. I will, I will tell her that. Do you that. know what for Rome means? Uh, no. So that's part of our early jargon. That's a real classic. What it means is, is that your wife is so hot that like, you know, like I always fantasize about being a Roman emperor. So it's like, that means she's for Rome. Meaning she's so hot that like back in Rome, if you saw her on the street, even she was walking with her parents, you would just say, I'm sorry, mater and pater. I have to take your daughter for Rome, and then she would just be a part of my harem. She'd become property of the state. She's property of the state of Rome, and she's for Rome. Yeah. There's Be nothing you me. can do about it. Believe me, we just moved to Florida. There's a lot of good-looking Spanish guys here all over the place. I, yeah. get, I get a little nervous. Everyone's checking her out. So I, get, I, I have to, you know, be protective. Spanish guys, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you in Florida exactly, brother? Key Biscayne. <laughs> Keep his case at anywhere near Tallahassee. Uh, well, you know, come on down, brother, if you're available. I know, uh, I don't know how your people do, but we party down here. So if you're available, come down to Tallahassee, brother. I'm at the Pink Lagoon Flamingo, and uh, we got the little midget Terry's bartending tonight. See how he gets those fucking shots up on the rail. Bring your lady down, too. I'll fucking do a shout out for tits, and you can pet the gator. Sound good, Jew? <laughs> only going if you guys are going on stage and doing comedy there when are you Absolutely guys coming better. to florida we got fucking comedy night and ribs three cents come on down yeah i um i was gonna come i was gonna come down there last week but now that got moved i don't know all my shows all my shows are in uh are in new jersey in august yeah, i have uh, i have virginia in in late august really or, you gonna, are we virginia. gonna drive you're gonna fly fly Nice. Who are you? But, are you doing? Are you headliner? Or are you with Tony Woods? Well, with Tony Woods, he's the best man. I'm yeah, he's great. First guy, first guy I ever opened for in this business was Tony Woods, and he was so nice to me. And I, I bombed really bad. Ask him about it. Mohican Son, I opened for him, and he, he's such a great dude. And uh, I just, I always, I always have a thing for Tony Woods because he was the first dude I opened for. Yeah, no, he's he's a he's a great guy. I'm trying to get him to to write a book right now about. I mean, that guy's got stories. About blow. I mean, the kid likes blow. <laughs> let's be honest. He's definitely got a lot of stories. I don't know which <laughs> stories, but he's got a lot of stories, and he should he write a book. Did a about lot it. of blow with Angelo Lozada. Let's just be honest. R.I.P. So R. I. I've uh, I, I've opened for him quite a bit. He's a he's a great guy to to learn from. He's like a uh, you know he's got an interesting style, yeah, absolute but, master. Like he's got his own style. And you even Dave Chappelle admitted that like that was his guy coming up in his Mark Twain Award acceptance speech. He shot it out Tony Woods. Did you know that? Like Tony yeah, yeah, Woods yeah. was the guy that took Dave under his wing. And then and, Dave was the guy, and then Dave was the guy that took Tony Woods' essence and became Dave Chappelle. Yeah, it's just basically what just happens. What happens? Yeah, it's just how it goes. Yeah, no, I know. To I I watched the Mark Twain Awards. Tony's got stories. I should have yeah. Tony on the podcast and asked him about that. He's he's told me some interesting stories. But one is, he said, "You know what the difference between me and Dave Chappelle is? Dave Chappelle read a book, and right. that was interesting. If you look at their styles, like yeah. that, that kind of explains a lot." 
Yeah, yeah I mean, Dave Chappelle's one. I mean, you could just tell. I mean, he's one of the smartest guys you can ever listen to. fucking guys. But, yeah. you know, that's how it happens. You know, it's like everyone, you know, the people who are the most commercially successful probably aren't the ones who thought of it. Like, I guarantee you right now fucking... Aaron Berg's wife and Corinne Fisher are going to come out with a hearse to her hyenas and it'll be coming to you soon and then they'll fucking blow up and me and Chrissy will be fucking performing in Poughkeepsie at a Soul Joe gig. It's what what's going to happen. Well, you guys are doing really good. I, I always watch and observe and learn. So uh, your, your podcasting skills are, are unmatched, I would can say. I just, Thank you, can I be Thank honest you, with Bubbas. you, babe? We always have a good time with you. And, and I, I, I'm not speaking for Chrissy, but I'm speaking for myself. I love you to death. I think Chrissy does too. You're the greatest, man. You're a fun dude. You're funny. You're smart. And you're, you're a fucking piece yourself. And I don't want to <laughs> unleash Chrissy on you, but he will fucking follow you down, hunt you down, and kiss you right on the genitals and the mouth. It's Wait, what it is. And I second Giannis. I love you more than Giannis. Yeah. <laughs> well, by the way, there was a funny comment on a Tim Dillon uh, Patreon Um Someone said Tim Dillon is the less gay version of Chris Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, he said the bigger, less gay version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, it's yeah. really funny. It's funny. It, it's fu it's actually funny because you're straight as they come, and he's as gay as they come. But he acts like a straight guy, and you act like a fully charged Fudgy yogurt. It's what it is. It's opposites. It's wild. It's 2020. Is what it is. That's, is what that's it is. the key. That's freedom. I mean, that fucking kid, Tim Dillon, can't keep his meaty Long Island Irish potato monkey pauper paws off of Twinks. <laughs> yeah. The and kid he's loves me, to eat fucking Twinkies and, and Pokeballs. And he's giving me $600,000 to keep that episode top secret. So, well, good. We'll when you see. come to the Bay Ridge Boy sketch, we're going to tie you up and steal your furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't even know where my furniture is. I'm like in Key Biscayne. I haven't been back to my apartment in months. So Yeah, well, I may go there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Your family wants to know where you are, James. It's true. I have some kids there. I have kids all over. So Yeah, you're you like got a, kids you're in, in the like, NFL. Yeah, you got kids in like 16 Airbnbs. I mean, you know, buy these kids a house for God's sakes. No way, man. Owning, you know how I feel about owning. So, yeah. and Chris, we're going to have to talk about this. How, you, you, you took your house off the market, but... Well, I took it right off the market and had to pay the person who put a bid in lawyer fees. <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah. I'll how, call you later and tell you about it. <laughs> and Giannis, you're still up in Westchester. And, and as Bill Burr says, living in your mansion with your, your Mercedes or your BMW. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm living... I'm, I'm so rich, Bill. I'm so rich. By the way, Bill, where's stand-up comedy now? <laughs> yeah, put us on your podcast, Bill, or we're leaving all things comedy. Yeah, or we're going to leave all things comedy. You hear us, Billy? Um, Gee, me, me, Giannis, and James are going to start a podcast network. Yeah, yeah I'm me. actually That's I'm in not New Hampshire. Impossible. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> all right, that'll be, that'll be our next episode. So right. anyway, you guys, thank you so much. I know it took a lot of your time. I really appreciate it. You guys are busy guys. History hyenas. My, I, I always tell people, people say, what podcast should I listen to? Is, does, should I listen to Malcolm Gladwell's podcast? No, listen to History Hyenas. If you want to learn something, listen to History Hyenas. Wait a second. Wait listen a second. I appreciate it, man. Wait a second. We're not on Malcolm Gladwell's podcast right now? Yeah. Uh, no, I, <laughs> you know what? I do, get, I do get stopped in the street and people say, oh, I really loved uh, Outliers by you. And I'm like, yeah. And I say, I always say thanks. Because yeah. why, why not? I remove Dude, that. If you're, if, if, if you're walking, if, if I couldn't see your face from behind you, I would say this is either. Malcolm Gladwell, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, or Rhea Perlman. It's one of the three. <laughs> uh, Rhea Perlman's sexy. I like her. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. I'll yeah. go with that one. So, all right. all right, guys, thanks so much. Thank you, man. Thank thanks, you, James. James. We love you, brother. Love you, bud. See you guys later. Later, man. These days, we're all investors, trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information.